<laughs> okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is uh, Terry. I'm uh, from Canada. I've been playing golf now for about 14, 15 years. I uh, play off a handicap of about uh, 15, which wasn't the case today. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
When you are a player that does not practice as often, you need to make sure that you choose good targets that allow for a miss. You should not expect to choose targets that require a perfect shot because if you miss, you are now in the water hazard. And obviously, as a mid to high handicap, or even as a low handicapper, it is very important to make sure that you avoid water hazards to avoid having big numbers on your scorecard. So I think that shows a little bit about um, basically choosing the right spot to hit a perfect shot and a not perfect shot. So you can see based on where Terry was aiming, when he hit a perfect shot, it was really good and he has a putt for birdie now. But because the first one, he kind of thinned it and missed it a little bit, the, the left side of the screen is actually further to carry than the right side. So if he had hit towards the right side, I think he would have actually made it across the water. But because he hit it towards the left side and just thinned it, it did not make the carry. So I definitely think that with that, you can clearly see the importance of choosing the right target. So as I mentioned, Terry's second shot put him in a good proximity to the pit. And that is because obviously, like I said, he had a pretty aggressive line to the screen. When you have aggressive lines to the green, it might pay off when you hit good shots. But the problem with that is when you don't hit good shots, you're definitely bringing things such as water hazards into play. In order to have more consistent lower scores, one of the things that you need to do is make sure that you're aiming not for a perfect shot, but for a shot that you know you can pull off more than 50% of the time and not 1 in 10 times. Obviously, between someone who practices every day and someone who plays more often than he practices, there is going to be a difference in swing consistency as well. For Terry, he is a pretty decent player for somebody that rarely goes to the driving range. He spends most of his time playing rather than practicing. This is not a bad thing, but obviously there are certain swing mechanics that he would benefit from fixing. However, there are also ways to make sure that you get around that. I think that one of the things that obviously Terry knows as well is that sometimes he just gets a little bit tentative and doesn't swing through and follow through to his left side. He kind of stalls it and kind of holds back and then, then he kind of snap hooks it versus hitting his regular fade. Terry also had a leg injury a couple of years back so that might have caused a little bit of his swing problems as well. However, with whatever swing problems he has, he can definitely still shoot a decent score if he were to implement a little bit more of course management. For this shot, even though he was in a little bit of an iffy lie, he decided to go with a hybrid and I assume it's to get it as close to the green as possible just because this is a pretty long hole. Due to the fact that he was definitely not going to get on the green anyway, I think it would have been better for him to just hit an iron and get it to a good distance, especially because it would have been much easier for the iron to get it off a rough on a downhill lie. As you can see, I obviously hit bad shots as well, but I think that my bad shots are just a little less costly than Terry's and that is probably the difference in our scoring as well. After Terry tinned his second shot from the bad lie, he still had a three wood into the green. Obviously, as I said just now, it would have been much better for him to hit an iron because he would have definitely gone further than he is now and probably would have some sort of iron into the green. Giving himself a three wood into the green was obviously not his plan, but just because of a miscalculation in what he should have hit, he left himself still a really long ways to the green. As you can see, Terry's chipping is definitely costing him a few strokes here and there, but that is something that he knows and is currently working on. I think he can easily drop about 5 strokes around if he were to fix his chipping because he has been chipping more than once on a hole, but he knows that chipping is one of the things that he's just not very confident with, so it's going to take practice, but as long as you are working on fixing the right thing, I think that is already a positive thing in itself because as the saying goes, practice is not only important, but perfect practice is important. Terry has been working diligently on his chipping and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the improvements that makes in his game. Yeah, 
What you got there? I got to the top of a, a bunker. I got 163. 163? Another thing that I noticed with Terry's game is the more uncomfortable he is with a shot, the faster his pre-shot routine is. Sometimes he just doesn't even go through it. And you can especially tell this on his chipping because he has admitted to me himself that he really just tries to get over with the chipping. He just doesn't feel comfortable and wants to get over with it. And that's as much as a technical thing as it has become mental. So obviously with more training, he's going to get more comfortable and be more confident with his chipping. So as I said, the chipping is definitely something that he's working on. But in general, with his pre-shot routine, you can tell throughout his game, it is not very consistent as well. So many amateurs underestimate the importance of a pre-shot routine. Some might not even have a consistent enough pre-shot routine to be called a routine. So I think with Terry, you can tell sometimes he takes one practice stroke, sometimes he takes two. Sometimes he walks behind the ball and sometimes he doesn't. So the pre-shot routine really prepares you for the shot. The pre-shot routine tells your body that it's ready to hit. It is very common among amateurs to not see people actually going through their pre-shot routine whether they have one or not. And part of the reason why is sometimes they just do not take their games as seriously, which I understand. But that's the thing about a pre-shot routine, it's catered to you. So you can have as short of a pre-shot routine as you would like or a really long one. The most important thing is that it needs to be consistent and it needs to be done all the time. So having a pre-shot routine is very important and I feel like that is something that could benefit Terry as well, especially with his chipping because his pre-shot routine is the most obviously different and very very quick when he is chipping. So I'm going to end the video here on this hole before Terry sues me for defamation but <laughs> no Terry was a great sport and I would really like to thank him for being on the video and I hope you guys liked this video I think you can clearly see that there are some parts of Terry's game that he can definitely improve but as I've always said, when there's parts to improve, it means there's a long ways to go in your improvement. When you have nothing to improve and you are still not shooting the scores that you would like, then you need to be worried. If not, I still see that there is going to be a lot more golf for Terry to play and a lot lower scores for him to shoot. Thank you guys for staying tuned to another episode of Golf with Jen. If you would like to see more Terry, leave a comment down below asking for more Terry. Thanks so much again for watching and see you guys next time.